Welcome to our lecture online. Our next problem is kind of interesting. We have a solid disk, has a mass equal to 4m. It is motionless and it can rotate about this point right here. Another object with mass m is traveling at a horizontal uh, path with velocity v and collides with the disk right tangent to the disk and sticks to the disk. The question then is, what is the final angular velocity of the disk and the ball and find the impulse of the bearings on the disk. All right, how do we do that? Well, I think we need to use conservation of angular momentum because there is a collision. So that means we can write that L initial equals L final. So the L initial, there's two objects at play here. We have the I, one omega one initial plus I two, omega 2 initial, so this would be the I omega of the ball plus the I omega of the disk. That must equal I1 plus I2 times omega final because they stick together and omega final is what we're looking for. Now since the disk does not have any initial angular velocity, we could then say that this portion goes to zero. So this is the portion of the disk that goes to zero which means that if we solve for omega final, we can then write that omega final is equal to I1, omega one initial divided by I1 plus I2. So now you may say, well, what is the I of the object M traveling in a straight line path? Well, it's not so hard to find the I of the solid disk. That's one half M R squared, M being four small m. But what about the small m here traveling in a straight line? What is the moment of inertia there? Well, what you can think about is when it's traveling, once it sticks, it'll be traveling in a circular path of radius r. So the moment of inertia of, a, of an object traveling in a circular path, that would mean that the moment of inertia i can be expressed as this. So i for the small mass, would be equal to, that would be m r squared because all the mass is, is, the, is at a distance r away from the center rotation. So that would be m r squared for the moment of inertia. And then if we want to find L for the small mass, oop, I'm missing an A there. That would be equal to i times omega, so in this case it would be m r squared times omega, and omega would be v over r. Then one of the r's cancels out, and we're left with m v r, which by now should be familiar. Anytime we have an object traveling in a straight line path, we want to convert that to the angle of momentum. Once it hits an object and starts going in a circular path, will be m times v times r. So in this case, I1 can now be expressed in terms of mr squared. So this is equal to mr squared times omega 1 initial. So the multiplication that would simply be mvr. So we can simply go ahead and write this as mass times velocity times the radius of the disk divided by the sum of the two moment of inertia. That would be mr squared plus 2mr squared for the moment of inertia of the disk. So then continuing over here, we can see then that omega final will be equal to mvr divided by, sum those together, that would be 3mr squared. And now when we cancel some things out, we can cancel the mass and cancel one of the r's. You can see then that the omega final would be equal to one-third v over r. And that's in terms of the original velocity of the mass and r being the radius of the disk. Now what about the impulse? The impulse by definition, i, impulse, and I'll write down impulse, otherwise we might confuse it with i of moment of inertia, impulse equals i, which is equal to force times delta t, and since we don't know the time of the collision, we can also think of it as the change in momentum, p. In this case, we're going to make it the change of linear momentum because the impulse over here 
will be reciprocated by the impulse of the bearings back onto the disc. So in this case, delta P, uh, that means that impulse I is equal to delta P, which is delta M times V. And if the mass doesn't change, that means M times the change in velocity, which means it's equal to M times V final minus V initial. So now we need to find the final V. Now the final V is going to depend on the final omega. So in this case, we have impulse is equal to the mass times the final V. And remember that V is equal to R times omega. And omega is known. Omega is equal to, where are we? Omega is equal to this. So M will be R times omega final. I'll just go ahead and do that. So that would be V final minus V initial, which is V. And omega final is one third V over R. So that means that impulse is equal to M times R. R would be, uh, well, that's still R. Omega final is one third V over R minus V. And notice in this case, the R's cancel out. We have one third V minus V. So that means that this is equal to uh, one third minus, all oh, that would be minus two thirds M times V. So that would be the impulse on the ball, right? Because the ball collides with the disc, that would be the impulse onto the ball. And then we can say that, we're not quite done yet, over here. So I on the bearing, the impulse on the bearing, will be equal to the negative impulse on the ball, which we just found because that's the impulse on the ball. So therefore it'll be the negative of that, so that means that I on the bearing will be equal to the positive two-thirds M times V. And that's the impulse of the bearing on the disc as a result of the ball hitting the disc. So the impulse of the disc onto the ball will then result in an impulse of the bearing onto the disc in the opposite direction. And that's how we find the final omega, the final angle of velocity, and the impulse of the bearing on the disc. And that is how it's done.